Yeah, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Hey, um, I just want to do a, um, a video sort of talking about um, biasing for amplifiers. Uh, in this particular case, the, the Class A common emitter uh, amplifier here. Um, you'll notice that for a lot of these sort of the simple um, uh, small signal amplifier configurations that I've been playing around with, that I just sort of take the generic, yeah, we'll just use 10 milliamps uh, as the quiescent current uh, and basically go for there and just, and just accept um, whatever the power transfer will be but um, I'm just wondering and, and what I want to do with this video is to start a, a bit of a conversation I guess um, in, in the uh, in the comments about what, you know, what is the most appropriate way of of starting with and biasing a transistor um, and maybe the better way is is to do what I have done in the past uh, with regards to uh, the power amplifier for the RF is to work out well I want to have X amount of power at this point going into say the antenna um, this is the db gain of this particular uh, stage therefore i want i need to have um, this value leading in which means this amplifier here needs to be able to deliver that into that amplifier and 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 so forth um, and i'm just wondering if that is the the proper and slash you know more appropriate way of starting with uh, with i guess any amplifier and if we were or if i was to take that approach with regards to this uh, antenna amplifier then maybe we should be looking at or I should look at what the amplifier is feeding take this approach and then go from there so if that was the case then this amplifier is going to be feeding a tough 3 a mixer and that particular mixer wants to see on the RF port and the yellow port according to the spec sheet um, 7 dBm um, now these are 50 ohm ports so uh, uh, 7 dBm um, uh, equates to 5 milliwatts. So 5 milliwatts uh, for that 50 ohm load, uh, which equates out to 1.414 volts uh, peak to peak. Um, so that's what, you know, if, if, we, if we take that approach, then that's what I need to be able to deliver into that particular uh, load there, so to speak. Now, Class A amplifier, uh, it's transformer coupled. It's class A, uh, so being a transformer coupled uh, amplifier, my maximum efficiency that I'm going to get out of that amplifier uh, is uh, 50%. Um, so I'm going to work on 40% efficiency for that particular amplifier there, just to get a bit of headroom there. So if that's the case then, for, for no signal going in, uh, I need to um, make sure that... Uh, with a 40% efficiency that my uh, transistor there, the, the 2N 3904, can dissipate that power. So if I was to uh, take 5 milliwatts uh, divided by 0.4, so that 40% efficiency, I come out with 12.5 milliwatts. Um, so that's the, the overall power that my power supply here, or the battery in this particular case, needs to be able to deliver to this circuit as a whole. And like I say, for zero input, um, all of that power needs to be dissipated across the transistor. Now, according to the spec sheet for the the three for the uh, the, the, the three nine zero four, it's six hundred and twenty five milliwatts is my maximum power dissipation. So that's good. So I'm um, I'm well within that. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, so what I can do now, so having determined um, what I need to to, to deliver. And then worked out that uh, my power supply needs to be able to deliver 12.5 milliwatts into the stage. Then I can work out what my current needs to be in the quiescent condition. So 12.5, well, power equals volts times current. So therefore current equals power divided by volts. So 12.5 milliwatts divided by 12 volts uh, VCC. I come out with 1.04 milliamps. So I'm going to round that to, to 1 milliamp. Uh, to to make the maths nice and easy moving forward. So straight away uh, from the last video, you'll see that I had initially used uh, 10 milliamps um, as my quiescent current. So if indeed this approach actually works and is an appropriate way of doing it, and I'll build up the circuit um, later on and do some tests, then straight away I'm now saving 9 milliamps over my initial design which clearly, uh, from a battery conservation point of view, 
I get a longer battery life out of the, uh, or longer life out of that particular charge. So then it's just a matter of now taking that quiescent current and, and using that as the starting point for moving forward. Now I won't particularly go into the, the full details of this because um, I've done that several times before and I, and I don't want to risk repeating myself. But again, just sort of at a, at a higher level, beta DC for this particular device. Um, we just said there that we want to use one milliamp. This is the spec sheet uh, for the 3904. So that's going to be between 70 and 300. So taking the geometric mean, the square root of 70 times 300, I come out with 145. Uh, if I do take that standard sort of uh, rule of thumb and apply uh, the emitter voltage to be one tenth of VCC, uh, I come out of an RE of uh, 1.2 K ohms. Um, same as we've seen before working out the R2 and the R1, uh, noting that our beta current equals our collector current divided by beta DC, and our collector current is essentially the same as our emitter current. The only difference between the two is that small amount of current um, that flows out of the base as opposed to going out there but because that's in the microamps area um, or region I should say effectively our collector current is the same as our emitter current um, so having said that we can then divide our emitter current by 145 which was our beta DC and we can come out with what our base current will be and again so R2 comes out to be 27k R1 Again, now with that 11 times the base current going through it for our voltage divider, comes out at 120k. So there goes our 1, 2, 3 um, biasing resistors. What I'm going to play around with, um, I'm going to use a little trim pot here. Uh, and on the, the, uh, the wiper arm, I'm going to have a small uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor, which I'll then use to expose, so to speak, a portion of that emitter resistor so it won't be fully bypassed in order to adjust the overall gain of that stage because the gain uh, is inversely proportional uh, to our emitter resistor. Um, so like I say, yeah, so that, that's the plan. I'll, I'll put a little, like I say, 100 nanofarad capacitor, adjust it up and down to get that overall voltage gain across the device uh, to be that sort of you know, four rod or so. Um, I don't necessarily know if that's a good approach, having just said that I want to be able to deliver at least 7 dBm into that, but eh, you don't try, you don't, you don't know. So in terms of our input resistance, we said that our, our input resistance equals a parallel combination because our power supply is decoupled. Uh, R1 in parallel with R2, um, I mean, there's a subtle mistake here, just take away those for the time being. It's R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with beta AC times little RE. Um, it's little RE only because I'm assuming that this particular capacitor here has fully bypassed RE. If it's not fully bypassed, then this um, part here becomes beta AC little RE plus whatever portion of RE is unbypassed. Uh, little RE uh, contrary to the error that I made in the uh, the last video, uh, is 26 divided by our emitter current in milliamps. And we just said before that our emitter current is 1 milliamp. So 26 divided by 1 uh, equals 26 ohms. Our beta AC, again, going back to our spec sheet for this particular device, we can see here that our gain bandwidth product for the 3904 is 300 megahertz. That's our FT. Um, and therefore beta AC is FT divided by, our, divided by our operating frequency, in this particular case 7 megahertz, which comes out at 43. So now plugging in our known values that we've got for R1, for R2, and for beta AC, which we've now determined, and our little RE is here, assuming that RE is fully bypassed, we come out of an RN of 1064 ohms. Now assuming that... Um, We'll put a transformer in here to transform up uh, what is 50 ohms from the bandpass filter. Uh, we can then say that our turns ratio is the square root of 1064 to by 50 ohms. That's a 50 ohm uh, filter. Comes out at 4.6. Um, so I'm just going to start straight away looking at a, a, a turns ratio or a, a primary 
Turns ratio of 4, 5, or 6. So 4 times 4.6 equals 18.4. 5 times that equals 23. 6 times that equals 27.7. Again, and then as we've seen many times before, that sort of 4 to 5 times our load resistance needs to be our XL for the smallest winding. Um, and we know that for an FT37-43, that four turns comes out at 5.6 microhenries, five turns comes out at 8.75. Um, and if I was then to plug that into our inductive reactance formula, XL equals 2 pi FL, where F equals 7 megahertz. Um, we have a four turns of 246, five turns comes out at 384 ohms. And we've just set up here that um, the higher end of our sort of, yeah, our rule of thumb is five times 50 equals 250. We can see that our four turns there is, is close enough for uh, for government work. So we could then use that four to so 18 odd turns um, as our, our transformer. Five to 23 would be just as fine. It, it certainly it would be a better, so to speak. Um, and it's got a more rounder number there, but eh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, so I'm not going to um, say any more there. So it's just more of a, uh, like I say, a, a, a kickstart to a bit of a conversation about, you know, what is the, the most appropriate um, starting point, so to speak, for working out all these numbers down track for our emitter resistors and our voltage divider biasing. Um, should, should there be, and I'm sort of just talking off the cuff now, just concentrating on, on our desired voltage gain needs to be, or should we take the more, and I've certainly seen it many times in the textbooks, Know, what power does this particular amplifier need to deliver into the load and therefore this is what this needs to be. Um, my, my gut feeling is that is the most appropriate um, process but again totally opening up to, um, to uh, comments there and, and I apologize straight away if I don't answer um, the comments this is this is more around sort of soliciting and getting a bit of a conversation going uh, amongst the community to uh, so we can all learn about what is the most appropriate way. Because I've said it many, many times, these are not tutorials. I am not an expert, I am not a professor, I am not a lecturer in all this. Um, I'm just trying to understand and put into practice theory that I learnt many, many years ago when I first joined the Air Force. Um, and like I say, trying to better understand that as well as foster through these videos um, a bit of a community of for looking into homebrew because I love doing homebrew and and if I can do it like I said you know many others can do it as well so anyway I'm starting to ramble so I'm going to uh, call it quits here and uh, we'll see where it goes cheers all